Welcome back, Quote Pack, to another Gado tutorial. Today we'll be going over 3D movement using the GD script. Um, start off with a new project, and we're going to add a few things first. Um, the first thing we are going to do is have to add a spatial. We're going to add a mesh instance. And we are going to change that to a box or a cube mesh, sorry. Go down to transform and we're going to change the scale. Um, let's go 10 by 0.5 oops, by 10. There we go. And that will give us a plane. Um, then we're going to come up here to where it says mesh and we're going to create a convex static body. Um, when you have a simple mesh such as our cube, creating that static body will be the easiest way to get collision working. Um, it automatically creates your static body in your collision shape. If you have something like a player or something, you'll have to actually go in there and manually do it, rather it be a capsule or um, a tight box on the player to hold all the animations. We'll get more into that as we move further with 3D, though. Um, and then we will save this as floor. We're going to make a new um, a new scene, and the same thing, we're going to add a spatial. And to that spe spatial, we're going to add a mesh instance, and this is going to be a wall that we have. So it's going to be another cube, and we are going to scale it, let's say, 10, 10, 0 0.5, I believe. Yeah, that'll work. Just gonna move it up. I'm actually gonna use this to get it centered. There we go. Now that we have our wall done, we can save that. <coughs> Oop, not new scene. And you can press Control S. I cannot do to my recording software, as I've stated before. Um, we're gonna save that as well. Yeah, Control S is the shortcut for starting recording, so that kind of hinders that shortcut useless in applications. Lastly, we're going to make the player. Now, we're not gonna add a static mesh. We're gonna add a kinematic body. If I can spell right. And to that kinematic body, we are going to add a mesh instance. And our mess instance will be a capsule. And then we're going to make sure we have the kinematic body clicked because we want our collision body to be a child of the kinematic body and not the, or sorry, our collision shape. Um, it needs to be a child of the kinematic body and not the mesh instance. So, collision shape, and we are going to select capsule. And you can see that it, you can see that it forms excuse me, that it forms into the capsule fit um, through these guidelines. And that's how you know that you have your collision body on. Um, we're going to save this as player. And lastly, we're going to create our main scene. Now, since we have all these created, we can drag and drop these. Oops. First, we need to add a spatial. Okay, now that we have our spatial, we can drag and drop these into the scene and kind of move them to where we want them to be. I'm going to use the transform so I can get it placed exactly in the center. There we go. Drag in our new wall. I'm going to move that to center and move it over. I'm going to kind of rotate it a little bit, then I'll add another one. There we go. You have to make sure that you're under the, um, the 
main spatial. Let's go ahead and rename that main. And we're going to go through and rename these just so it's not confusing. That's floor. We're going to name this angled wall. And we're going to move this wall. over and just rename it wall. Whoops. Finally we're going to drag our player into the scene. We're going to rotate him some. Let's go down to transform and we're just going to make sure that's that perfect up and down. We're going to put him at zero zero zero. Drag them up a little bit. There we go. And lastly, we need to add a camera. Whoops. Let's make sure that our player here isn't parents. It's anything. Now we're going to click on our kinematic body, which is our player. We can go ahead and rename that player. And we're going to add a camera. And this is just the quick, easy way to get a camera to follow a player. Um, get the camera out here real quick. Nope, oh, that's not what I want to rotate. There we go. Now if you notice, there's an arrow on the camera right here. That is telling you what direction is facing up. So the way, if that arrow is pointing up, then your camera is looking right side up, and that's what you want. Now we just have to position the camera. Rotate it, drag it back, up. I want it to be centered on the player. Oops, sorry. I think my batteries are dying in my mouse. It's going to be slightly above, and then I'm going to rotate it downward. And we have a preview button up here that shows you what the camera is singing. So you can use that until you can get exactly how you want it. And I think that's good enough. I'll drag it back up and rotate it down a little bit more. There we go. And that's it for our scene. Now it's time to add some script. So let's click on our player and add script. We're going to leave everything the same. Um, it's a kinematic body. We're using GD script, so there's no need to change anything. There we go. Um, we have, <coughs> just like before, we have some commented things. Kind of guide you where to go, your variables up at the top, um, your ready function, or things that are called before or as soon as the object is added to the scene and then we have our function uh, process delta we're going to go ahead and delete this comment and we're going to add physics to this because we are using physics for uh, the jumping and up here we're going to add a few variables um, our first variable is going to be speed we're going to set that to 100. We want our variable location so we know where the player is and that's going to be a vector 3. And the difference between a vector 2 and a vector 3 is a vector 2 only does x and y. Um, vector 2, 2 axes. Y is a vector 3, it does x, y, and z for the 3 axes. Um, we're going to add another variable, gravity. And we're going to set that to set that to nine. We'll set it to ten since the constant for gravity is um negative nine point eight, which is physics. So if you haven't had physics yet, you'll probably learn that later. Um, and finally our velocity, and that is going to also be a vector three. 
Now, this is based off of movement that I've watched a YouTube uh, video for. I am just going over the movement, but if you, I will have that link below if you want to go check out um, Jeremy Bull's channel or Bullock channel. Um, he has great tutorials overall. That's how I first got started into Godot. I've went through his um, what was it? His 3D movement tutorial first. Okay. And that's it. Now we're gonna go down the function. We're gonna press tab because the way that um, GD Script sets up, it's all tab based. As you can see over here, all of this has tabs. Um, anytime you create a new line for a new function, you have to have a tab space. To begin with, we are going to change the locate or set the location to vector three, and we want to zero it out. That way we're not compiling on our movement. So if I move to the left one, our vector isn't going to be 1, 0, 0. So if I was to move to the left again, it will move us two spaces instead of one. We want to avoid that, which is why we set up this location uh, command. Um, now it's time for some input. If input is action pressed and we want to get our UI left we need to set the location so we're gonna set the location of X to negative one or minus one and that's what minus equals uh, signifies you're subtracting one from your current location and I forgot to add a semicolon as soon as I found my mouse there it is we're going to add a semicolon, or sorry, a colon there. And we can copy and paste this. It's going to be the same for the next four. So copy. And we're just going to change this UI and the values down here. So, okay, now that we have all that commented, um, we're going to move on. It's important to comment your code for something like this, which is going to be 30, 40 lines maybe. It's not as helpful because you can easily just go through it and see what is where but if you have hundreds to thousands of line in your, lines of code in your game then it's going to be hard to signify or find something that you need to change whether it be some form of movement or some form of uh, AI interaction or NPC interaction so in order to make a comment you use the pound symbol so shift 3 to denote a comment um, lastly we're going to uh, normalized location like we did over in the 2D movement. So we're going to change location or get location and it's going to equal location not normalized. And finally we're going to set the location to delta time. So we're going to set the location to so location times speed times delta. And now it's time to set up some velocity, or, yeah, velocity, which is going to handle our um, gravity. So we're going to take velocity y, and it's going to be 7y plus, plus equals our gravity times delta. That way we are falling at a consistent rate. Um, based off of the gravity constant that we set earlier. And then our um, x and z are just going to be location. So velocity x equals location x and velocity z equals location z. And finally, we're going to set up a move and slide, which is similar to the move and collide from the 2D um, tutorial that we did last week. So we're going to set velocity to move, move and collide, and it's going to be velocity vector 3, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so the reason that we set the um, the vector 3 to 0, 1, 0 is because if we are on the floor, we don't want to fall through the floor. Um, 
so that takes care of that. Now we have to check for if we are on the floor. If is on floor and we're jumping. So input is key pressed and we're going to use is key pressed um, rather than action pressed and we're going to use our space key to denote that we are jumping and that with a colon um, we're going to change our velocity we're going to get velocity dot y and we're going to set it to let's set it to 4 now if we were to run this we should be able to move and jump up oh, I haven't saved my main ah okay so that auto field has moved and collide which is why it wasn't working now it should work there we go and our camera is actually angled wrong so let's go in there and change that the code works but um I'll show you if you don't have your camera set up properly your movement isn't going to be correct and I should have actually looked at that before I started okay so we have our three axes um, we have the green which is Y our red which is X and our uh, Z which is the blue and if you go to our script we want to move on the X axis when left and right is pressed so since I had my camera over here we were moving on the X axis we need to be lined up with the Z axis in order for our movement to look properly or to look proper so let me reset my camera that'll be good enough for this video now when we move left and right um, the left arrow key actually moves left, the so right arrow key actually moves right. Forward moves forward, backward moves backwards. If we were to press space, we jump. And you can tell by us coming back down that gravity is working. Let's move to the... Oh, we forgot to add a collision body for that, I believe. Yep. Let's add a collision body real quick. So, for our wall, we'll go back to wall, click on it, mesh, create a convex static body. There we go. And now we run the scene, we should be able to go up the wall that we have angled. Don't want to run the wall scene. We have to make sure we were running the right scene. There we go. We want to run our main scene. And when we come towards this wall, should go up it, jump, when we go down, we'll actually hit down the wall. If we go over to the other wall, we collide with the wall. And I'm actually going to change our speed variable. I'm going to bump that up some. So we're moving extremely slow. Let's go to 500. We're going to move our camera a bit so we can see better. So we go up, hit this wall, and if we were to jump off, we just fall. Right, that's it for this tutorial. Um, Wednesday we'll be going over doing the same thing in visual scripting. Hopefully I can understand how to get the jump working, because that has been a pain for me. Um, I have all the movement done. I have, um, I have the movement done. I have it looking nice and neat. I just can't figure out the jumping. And on Friday, we'll be going over the ClickTeam iOS exporter. So I will see you guys later.